variety, which I'm really happy about. I have to be honest. This says James Corden's farewell includes a duet with Tom Cruise and parting messages to the US. Remember what America signifies you know go fuck yourself but essentially the headline here from deadline is the main one james corden leaving the late late show in 2023 so this fat fuck this annoying flipping guy who essentially i think essentially dumbed down what it means to be a late night tv host for everybody out there is now leaving i feel like one of the worst shows to ever exist out there in 2023 and for the most part it feels like this is a consequence in some respect relating a little bit to this infamous keith mcnally expose right keith mcnally the famous restaurateur who exposed james corden right i think he was the first person prominent person in in kind of you know in the entertainment industry adjacent to basically mention aloud that james corden's a bit of a piece of shit i think if you're on reddit and whatnot you would have seen random posts i forgot what the subreddit is but there's a particular subreddit where they speak about meeting famous people and they share kind of the experiences and i think there's a thread about who's the worst person and a consistent offender in one of those threads to the point where i used to think of some of it must be satire was james corden there'll be random people saying oh i saw him at this restaurant i saw him at this bar i was on set with him and they'll be talking about how awful of a person he was which made which surprised me because i don't know why in my head i've got this weird thing in my head where because a person looks the way they look like james corden looks how he looks right he's somebody he's kind of easy to bully based on his laugh his demeanor his face the way his body is shaped you just think someone like this can't be rude because essentially if you're rude and you're mean to people they have so much nasty things they can say about you straight away but i think over time i've started to learn that being a bully and being mean and being horrible to people isn't just kind of you know a, a thing sort of reserved for people who look a certain way anybody can be mean and be a bully and clearly um james corden was one and this infamous expose post from keith mcnally on instagram was the best and if you know anything about keith mcnally you know that he does these kind of you know posts where he kind of feature celebrities that maybe have come to his restaurants in the past um people that he's kind of known and this post was funny because it, it took a very small image of you know flipping james corden from google instead of downloading the high quality version in a boom away he downloaded the smallest pixel version he could blew it up so it's all pixelated and then he added this caption this is in october 17 2022 so i legitimately think this was the beginning of the end of james corden's flipping um career on flipping tv and how he's perceived overall in media because this keith mcnally post i think kind of helped to kind of have people you know be aware of how much of a piece of shit he's been in the scenes so the quote here or the caption from keith mcnally's instagram back then about james corden said the following james corden is a hugely gifted comedian but a tiny cretin of a man and the most abusive customer to my Bartazar servers since the restaurant opened 25 years ago. I don't often 86 a customer. Today I 86 Corden. It did not make me laugh. Um, he did not, but here are two examples of the funny man's treatment of my staff. Manager's report number one. In June, James Corden was here at table 61, although this is diabolical. It happens very occasionally in all restaurants. After eating his main course, Corden showed the hair to Balthazar manager G, who was very apologetic. Corden was extremely nasty to G and said, get us another round of drinks this second. Also, take care of all our drinks so far. This way, I write any reviews on Yelp or anything like that. So James Corden is essentially a Karen imagine this imagine that right and usually people would say you can judge a lot about a person um, based on how they treat you know service workers whether they be people that work in stores a bartender or somebody working in a restaurant as a waiter or whatever it may be you can judge a lot about a person's character and how they are based on how they treat service industry people which is probably a very interesting good place to come to if you're gonna go on a date with somebody it's kind of it's kind of counterproductive but it probably would be the best option if you're going to go on a first date with somebody to go out somewhere very public very public and very busy to see how they interact with other people invading their space quote unquote um you know delays in service all this malarkey like how do they kind of react to it especially in your presence like that's probably a better way to kind of judge a person and see if there's any red flags that you should be kind of aware of 
um, another one here. Manager's report number two. James Corden was at Bautista with his wife in October the night. This to me is the worst one. Um, he asked for a text, even though the first one is still kind of bad, right? He basically, you know, blackmailed him or kind of, you know, in, in a way to give him drinks so he wouldn't write a nice review on Yelp. The fact that James Corden is a review on Yelp is hilarious also. But anyway, it continues. James Corden was at Bautista with his wife on October 9th for brunch. He asked for a table outside. Brunch made to D. Um, Ali Walters took the party to table 301. Mr. Corden's wife ordered egg yolk omelette with a Gruyere cheese and salad. A few minutes after they received the food, Corden called their server, MK, and told, their, and told her there was a little bit of egg white mixed with the egg yolk. Did you hear that? His complaint was about his wife, right? So he did the bitch made thing and was crying for his wife. He was complaining that there was a little bit of egg white mixed with the egg yolk. MK informed the floor manager G. The kitchen remade the dish, but that unfortunately sent with, but but they unfortunately sent it with some home fries instead of salad. So first of all, he's complaining about the egg yolk, the egg yolks being in the in the bit of the egg white. Then he gets a, a dish remade with some home fries sent instead of a salad. But there's this whatever, right? Mistakes happen, especially if you're sending back food all the time. It is what it is. <laughs> that's when james corden began yelling like crazy to the server you can't do your job you can't do your job maybe i should go in the kitchen and cook an omelet myself mk was very apologetic and brought g over to the table he returned the dish and after that everything was fine he gave them promo champagne glasses to smooth things out g said that corden was pleasant with him but nasty to the server which is horrible that's even worse, right? Being nice to the manager because they're in charge and then treating the server like shit, which puts the manager in a shit position. Hate that also. Um, Corden was pleasant with him, but now she's a server. MK was very shaken, but professional that she is continuing to finish her shift. So I, I think personally, this sort of kind of added to the negative sentiment around James Corden. And I don't think he's ever recovered from this. He really hasn't recovered from this. I don't think reputational wise. Now, in terms of ratings, this is a really strange thing to come from. I wonder, I wonder, again, this is a weird one. What, how much damage do you think long form podcasting has done to shows like this? Because I don't watch TV anyway. So any clips I would have seen of the Late Late Show or Carpool Karaoke would have come from YouTube, would have come from social media or whatever it may be. But I haven't sat down and watched one of these shows in donkey years. I maybe watched it in the past, but I haven't before. So I wonder who is watching this stuff on like a weekly weekend basis like who's legitimately sitting down tuning into this stuff especially if you're kind of going to have these people on there because i think there's definitely some overlap between the guests that go on the late late show to promote um you know a, a show they're on a book they're releasing documentary whatever it may be most of those people will also go on podcasts that you listen to your favorite podcasts are, or will definitely have a guest that goes on the late late show on there so what would you rather would you rather listen to them sit down and have a really expansive far-reaching long-form interview with like a joe rogan for three hours plus or would you rather have them sit down with james corden this fat shit squealing like an idiot trying to be funny and not being funny for what 20 30 minutes half an hour an hour in this really kind of chopped up weird way where they don't really get to say their piece and sort of canned answers so i think weirdly enough podcasts have definitely sort of invaded into the space of live tv especially these sort of like late night shows because there's just not enough time in your day to listen and watch everything i wish i could i wish i could legitimately watch and listen to everything but i honestly don't think that's possible so maybe this is why these shows aren't working out so as much as i think it's annoying i reckon this probably has a lot more to do with outside forces like you know basically not a lot of people watching it as opposed to him being a piece of shit I think so. Anyway, read the article. Curse of Deadline. It says James Corden is prepared to say goodbye to the Late Late Show. The Brit has extended his contract for the CBS Late Late Show for one year and will be depart ahead of summer 2023. Corden will have hosted the Late Late Show for eight and a half years by the time he departs. Um, a major achievement. It's been a really hard decision, he says here. Um, decision... Um, to leave because I'm immensely proud of the show according to a deadline I'm thrilled to be extended for a year it's always thought it'd do it for five years and then leave and then I stayed on 
I've really been thinking about it for a long time, thinking whether there might be one more adventure. Um, it says here, Corden signed a contract to host a Late Late Show, which was hosted for nine years by Craig Ferguson in 2014 and premiered on March 23rd, 2015. The Gavin and Stacey co-creator was somewhat of a surprise choice, but he reinvigorated a 12.30 a.m. time slot on CBS and breathed a new life into the late-night show with viral segments of carpool karaoke, drop the mic, spill your guts, and crosswalk musical. In fact, Corden's carpool karaoke with Adele has been watched more than 250 million times on YouTube, while his journey with One Direction has racked up 189 million views. The Late Late Show um, YouTube page itself has already nearly 10 billion views and has more than 27, 27 million subscribers, the second highest in late night history. CBS chiefs, including President and CEO George Cheeks and CBS President Kelly Kill, SVP programming, blah 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 we're keen to keep Corden and offered a variety of deals including a free extension a two-year extension and a rolling one-year extension before he made the decision so they're saying that basically they went to keep him on board but it was ultimately Corden's decision I don't buy it personally I don't buy it I think if the ratings are good and the money's great why would you leave a job like this do you know what I mean it's basically making you rich beyond your wildest dreams you get to clock in clock out in a way it doesn't really make sense to be fair so I'm not really buying this too much um but my bosses here at CBS have been incredibly supportive and extremely extraordinary patient with me while I made this decision. Um, Corden added seven years ago, Corden um, came to CBS and took the television by storm with his huge um, creative and comedic swings that resonated in a big way with the viewers on air and online from crosswalk to the musical to legendary couple karaoke and every unique comedy segment he introduced. He also has been a consummate network showman entertaining audiences from the nightly perch of television as well as the Tony and Graham stage. So that's basically the end of it. Corden has left the Late Late Show. I'm actually pleased and happy about that. I'm not going to lie. Um, long time coming. He's, you know, definitely, I think, a reflection of people's attention in general and just the fact that people, well, I think when they find out you're a piece of shit and you have this bubbly, happy-go-lucky personality on screen, it's kind of hard for them to kind of connect with that anymore in the long term i think so i think so but i could be completely wrong and it all just could be him decision to kind of move and bet on himself as many other famous and illustrious guests have done over the years betting on themselves isn't it betting on themselves <laughs>